I've been wanting to buy one of these little My Arcade machines for some time now, but I was always a bit on the fence. How's the quality? Does it actually play well or is that completely relative to the person using it and the size of his or her hands? I've seen a lot of Gen X grown up reviews of tiny arcades and especially the My Arcade products, but my curiosity remained. A point that came up frequently is that all of these are NES ROM ports, so not the original arcade versions. So if I was going to buy one, I might as well go for an NES game I really like, but do not owe myself. The Bubble Bubble My Arcade is one of the later releases and the first time I get one of these in my hands. First I want to talk about the packaging. It looks really good with a high gloss and because it's plastic, it's a bit more sturdy than a lot of other packaging I've seen. The Switch Special Editions come to mind. It's a good thing if you want to collect these and keep them in pristine condition. I also believe they're very consistent with their packaging, so a full set would look killer on a shelf. Onto the device itself. It's powered by USB-C, but also runs on batteries. It has a built-in mono speaker on the back and two knobs for volume. All pretty standard you would say, but believe me, there are a few, let's say a bit more expensive tabletops that don't have the option for batteries or external volume control. The thing that gets me most excited about this unit and made me want to do the review is the build quality. These things do not feel cheap in my opinion. I was honestly preparing for loose or crooked stickers or a plastic stick with rough edges, but everything looks sturdy and smooth. There is a high gloss on the side art of the cabinet, which indicates an extra layer over the stickering. This makes it stand out from a distance and feels like quality in your hands. It may also protect the unit better against sticky fingers or humidity. It's also built a little bit broader than you think and it has anti-slip strips on the bottom. I have to say that I don't have huge hands, but I have big fingers. That was also something that kept me on the fence about whether or not to buy this thing. Playing it now feels completely fine. To capture the footage for this video I had my wrists in awkward positions, but normally it's really playable. I may even prefer it to playing it on the NES Classic. The buttons are responsive and the quality is fine. You can unscrew the little arcade stick to reveal a normal D-pad if you prefer playing it that way. Like mentioned before, this is the NES ROM of Bubble Bubble. There are a few differences between the original arcade version and later console ports. The Master System version as you see played here might be the best looking one, but since before this video I only ever played the NES ROM and that was my frame of reference and that's what I got. The sound is what you expect and it's definitely better than some retro handhelds that sometimes have terrible sound chips. This is what it sounds like on max volume. I love Taito. They're arcade giants and the makers of the first game I ever played, that being Flintstones. For me this is a Taito collectible, a Bubble Bubble collectible and perfect for my display and play philosophy if you will. I'm looking forward to getting more of these actually. I got my eye on the Mappy and Rolling Thunder one as they're affordable, but I would love to have the Space Invaders edition someday. It's a $20 or Euro step up in price from the Bubble Bubble one, which at this time is the most expensive one of the standard editions at $32 or Euros. I don't really have a grading system for reviews yet, but to paint a better picture for you guys, I give this product an 8 out of 10. Stay shiny guys!